Ladies and gentlemen, it breaks my heart whenever we have fathers that do have access to their children and these types of tragedies happen because I know us as men, we are up against it when it comes to our reputation, how we're being treated in the court, even how the person that we procreated with, how we have to interact with them and being kind of subjected to whatever it is that they want to do. So I hate that when we have these stories, when we act out, when we lash out, whatever it is, whether it's just the incompetence, whether that's in our nature, or if you just snap and have a bad moment, mental illness, whatever you want to call it, these things can't happen, especially when it comes to our babies. And I want y'all to look at this beautiful, healthy baby on my screen with a, such an amazing, bright smile. And I hate to report this news about this, but... I'm going to say some things that are not going to sit well with your sensibilities and the story is going to have some details that might rock you as well. So that is your disclaimer if you need to exit the video. A 30, a 30 year old California man is behind bars after authorities say that he brutally tortured and killed his six month old son last month. So this is his baby. This is not mom's boyfriend. This was dad's baby his own child his own child let me get his name up here we'll talk about the gofundmes here in just a moment that was the biological mother we'll talk about that here in just a moment <clears throat> i need to get a solo shot of him this is jahan sharad burtz his first name is spelled j-a-w-h-o-n burtz is spelled b-u-r-t-s of indio i-n-d-o and was taken into custody on December the 19th of 2021, just a matter of weeks ago, and charged with a slew of felonies in connection with the brutal death of his own infant child. And I'm getting this from lawandcrime.com, so thank you for the article. Burtz is currently being held in the John Bonnet Detention Center on suspicion of second-degree murder, torture, willful assault of a child resulting in death and infliction of corporal injury to a spouse or cohabitant among other charges according to online records not my words officers with the indio police department and firefighters at approximately 10 27 a.m on december 19th responded to a 911 call at about about an infant that was not breathing at an Encanto, let me see, Encanto apartment complex located on the 46-700 block of Clinton Street. A newly released probable cause affidavit obtained by the Sun reportedly says, upon arriving at the scene, first responders found the infant unresponsive and performed life-saving life procedures to temporar temporarily, I can't talk, let me say it again. First responders found the infant unresponsive and performed life-saving procedures to temporarily resuscitate the child. Due to the nature and severity of the child's injuries, officials immediately became suspicious that the boy was a victim of physical abuse. According to Indio police spokesman Ben Gertrin reportedly said, Medics rushed the child to a local hospital for treatment as officers took Burtz into custody without incident on suspicion of child abuse. Before we even get to the rest of these details, here's what I don't understand. Whatever happened, I know children can be a handful. It's an emotional thing. Even going through an argument with the person that you created the child with can be a very devastating thing that you might go through on men and women's side, but this can't be a solution. This cannot be a result under any circumstances. I don't care if a person cheated on you, if a person disrespects you, if you even maybe got into a physical altercation with that person. I don't understand like you can't do this to children. You can't do this to babies and they don't deserve this. This child can't even walk. This child doesn't even have teeth yet. Can't speak. 
I don't understand. Like, you look at this baby. What would make you want to hurt this beautiful baby who knows nothing and needs nothing but love and attention and care and food and sleep, clean them, and just let them grow? I've been a father. I had my daughter at age 24. I had my daughter at age 24, and I believed that I was ready to be a father at that point between me and my daughter's mom. We were ready to be parents. We were ready to co-parent and do what it takes to raise my daughter. And to be honest with you, I think we've done a pretty good job. I think we could have done better. We could have did it in one household. We could have did it and brought my daughter into the social construct known as marriage. We could have been more financially prepared. We could have went through counseling. We could have went through parenting classes. There's a lot that we could have done to better prepare to be parents. And, and on top of that, we had a lot of help. And if my daughter's mom or even my daughter's watching right now, they'll, they'll agree with what I'm saying. We had a ton of help and it was still very hard it took a lot of effort for, for us to raise our daughter. And I continue to say that. And I look into the camera and I hope that people hear me from in here, from your heart. Go through your ears, go to your heart and hear me when I say this. I think we need to take more time and be take more precautions before we produce children. At this point, I don't see the reason for us to have children outside of being married. If you're not going to get married, then don't have kids. Is that not a solution? This is not a black thing. It's not a white thing. This is a life thing. We are having too many children in unstable environments. These children have zero stability. And we wonder why this thing continues to keep happening. I keep preaching my message. I'm thankful for those that my message reaches. I'm thankful for those who email me the dozens of stories that say, hey, Jade, here's how you changed my life. People share with me stories all the time about how my words changed their life. And I am so grateful. So I'm thankful that even if you listen to me for a minute, for a moment, it does make a difference but it seems like we're fighting a losing battle. And I just hope that more people join in this. When you're talking about being an AFC member, the way that you truly become an advocate for children is in your homes, in your neighborhoods, in your cities, in your states. Be an advocate for your children. Be advocates for other children that you are around. Save the lives that you can touch. It's very simple, but let's keep going. Doctors then transferred the infant, which you can see on my screen, to the Loma Linda University Pediatric Clinic where he was placed on life support and the baby succumbed two days later and, pronounced, and was pronounced dead on December the 21st of 2021, right before Christmas. Following the infant's death, the charges against Burt's, the father, were upgraded to suspicion of murder, Geetrin told The Sun, which is a news publication. A judge then reportedly granted a petition from prosecutors with the Riverside County District Attorney's Office to have Burt's bond, which was originally set at $30, $35,000, to have his bond revoked. Now, keep in mind, the child wasn't dead at the time, so I can partially understand the low bond a little bit. And court documents obtained by Palm Springs ABC affiliate KESQ-TV, prosecutors accused Burt's of having willfully and unlawfully and with the intent to cause cruel or extreme pain and suffering for the purpose of revenge, extortion, persuasion, or for any sadistic purpose, inflicted great bodily injury to the child. That is a hellified description. Haley Knighton, the boy's mother, identified her as her, uh, identified her son as Kyrie Victor. So that's the baby's name. Let me see if I can get him up on the screen. That is Kyrie Victor. She told the TV station that she had just recently returned to work after several months of maternity leave when she got the call about Kyrie being rushed to the hospital. I dropped what I was doing at work 
and, and instantly just ran. She reportedly told the station, honestly, I am broken. Every day is like a blur to me. Knighton reportedly said that her three-year-old daughter witnessed Burt's beating the infant boy. So this was done in front of another child, another baby. And I'm assuming he's probably not the father of that kid. I don't know what inspired him to do it, especially to an innocent baby who can't fight back. I agree with that. He's going to have to live with that guilt every day, she reportedly said. Burtz has reportedly entered a plea of not guilty in the case. He remains behind bars without a bond and is scheduled to appear for a felony settlement conference at the Larson Justice Center January 28th, which is in two days at 8.30 a.m., so two days from today. A spokesperson for the DA's office reportedly told the Palm Desert Sun that sentencing enhancements attached to the charges of torture and assault on a child under the age of eight years old made Burtz eligible for the death penalty. <clears throat> That would make him eligible for the death penalty. Though prosecutors have not decided whether they intend to pursue that route. Now there was a GoFundMe page that was set up to help the family with funeral costs and other unexpected expenses. So let me get that on the screen so you guys can take a look at that GoFundMe. I believe this is where it's currently at right now. So the GoFundMe was set up by Nicole Faye Dean organizing it on behalf of Haley Knighton, which is the biological mother, asking for $10,000 and they have currently raised 4,780. It doesn't appear that they have life insurance, but I guess that's going to continue to be an ongoing theme. Let me give you guys the fair usage. If you guys would, make sure you click that thumbs up. We want to have one thumb up for everyone that's listening to these stories, okay? Hit that thumbs up. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. We're learning today that a man is facing a murder charge for the death of a seven-month-old baby boy. News Channel 3 has obtained court documents confirming the child died in December at Loma Linda Hospital. We're learning today that a man is facing a murder charge for the death of a seven-month-old baby boy. News Channel 3 has obtained court documents confirming the child died in December at Loma Linda Hospital. We also obtained this photo of the child, Kyrie Victor, from his family. Officers were called to an Indio home about a child not breathing. Prosecutors identified Johan Sherrod Burtz as the baby's killer. Burtz's next court appearance is set for next week. News Channel 3 has a reporter working on this developing story right now. Stay with us for more information online and on News Channel 3 live at 5. News Channel 3 tonight has learned a six-month-old baby boy is dead and police say he was killed and tortured by his father. Jawan Sherrod Burtz from India was arrested last month and is being held tonight in Indio jail on suspicion of murder, torture, willful assault of a child, and domestic abuse. News Channel 3's Jake Ingracia broke this story. He's live tonight after speaking exclusively with the mother of the child, Jake. Yeah, Karen John, just a heartbreaking story here tonight. And that mother says her child was taken too soon. And that question tonight remains in her mind. Why would the baby's father murder his son? Honestly, I am broken. Um, every day is kind of like a, like a blur to me. Haley Knighton speaking out for the first time publicly since losing her six month old baby uh. boy. Kyrie Victor Burtz. It happened December 19th at the Encanto Apartments on Clinton Street in Indio. Knighton just returned to work after maternity leave, getting the call that Kyrie wasn't breathing well 
and was being rushed to the hospital. I dropped what I was doing at work and like instantly just ran. Ben Gatron with Indio Police Department says emergency responders arrived to the medical call, finding injuries police say were suspicious, showing signs of abuse. Detectives identified the responsible being his father, Mr. Birch, who was arrested on the 19th later on that day. Knighton says her three-year-old daughter was a witness to the crime and now has to live with the trauma. And as a mother, there are still unanswered questions for her ex-partner. I don't know what inspired him to do it, especially to an uh, innocent baby who can't fight back, but he's going to have to live with the guilt every day. She says Burtz was, quote, a good father, but there were warning signs, including an instance of prior domestic abuse to her. Now she holds tightly onto the good memories of her precious Kyrie. Such a happy baby, smiling constantly. He just started to like giggle and get his like personality out and stuff. So Knighton on the pursuit of justice for her son and the life lost she'll never get back. I want justice for my baby because I only had six months. I mean, I'm so grateful I had six months with him, but I'm so mad at the same time I only had six months with him. Now, Burtz is being held tonight without bail, and he's expected back in court next Friday for a felony settlement conference. Knighton has set up a GoFundMe page to cover the baby's funeral and other expenses. If you would like to help, you can head to our website, KESQ.com. John Karen, we'll send it back to you. Yeah, heartbreaking story. What a tragedy. Thank All you, right. Jake. Well, this baby's murder brings the city of Indio to a total of seven homicides in 2021, with four of them occurring in the month of December. Now, Indio police say they did not release any information about this murder or arrest earlier because of a combination of COVID-19 staffing shortages and the holidays. Now, I don't know why they continue to keep talking about that, but nonetheless... My closing thoughts, I think, are very simple. I think that the like, if we look at the trend and how we're bringing children into this world, so I'll reiterate this point, I'll repeat myself, that the way that we're bringing children into this world is just not working. We can't continue to just keep having this, 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 these alleged relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend, and bringing kids into this world. Like that just doesn't make sense. And if we're gonna make a commitment to bringing a life into this world, I think that we need to make a commitment to family, a commitment to unity, a commitment to stability, a commitment to raising a child under one roof with biological parents, to just have all of these mixed families and children from here and there and from everywhere. I just don't see this as, product as productive. And I think that, I hate to say this, but I, I don't see this trend slowing down until we change our behavior. And I know we have a lot of people that are, a lot of people that are sensible, that get it, that understand, but I think that we need to continue to, to go out into the world and preach this message to others so that we can prevent tragedies just like this. But this baby died for absolutely no reason. This baby could not speak for himself, nor could he defend himself. But Kyrie was a precious, beautiful little baby. Beautiful little baby with a bright smile. I hate the fact that dad's picture is right there, but I'll take it just because that baby's smile, you can see how beautiful and bright it is right there. So Kyrie, young prince, excuse me, I said prince. I think this is their daughter, if I'm not mistaken. It's saying son. Yes, Kyrie, that's correct. I don't know why I thought daughter. This happened in front of the daughter. That's why I'm like, why am I thinking daughter? But that's why, because it happened in front of the mom's daughter. So yes, this baby boy suffered. Beautiful smile. Kyrie, young prince. R.I.P. Now thank you guys so much for listening with an open mind, as well as an open heart to the story. And I hope that this will help change somebody and make somebody a better parent. But thank you so much.